Hey, Trinity Youth Ministry, Sid Coop here. Super excited to be with you this week. Hey, listen, this week we're taking a break from the story, but I want to carry on from what Bex was talking about last week when she kind of leaned into this idea of what it looks like for us to choose to follow Jesus. And the idea being, of course, that choosing to follow Jesus isn't just like a one-time experience. This is something that we do on like a daily basis. So I want to take a look at Hebrews chapter 12 and answer the question, hey, how can we continue to follow Jesus even even when it becomes really difficult. Okay, uh, to say that my wife can be intense would be like a significant understatement. I mean, I remember a number of years ago, Jen and I were doing staff training for a camp near Abbotsford at the beginning of the summer. And then at the end of the week of staff training, we were taking the whole staff on a hike with our two young boys up to the top of a nearby mountain. As we were heading up the mountain with the staff, there came a point where the trail forked in two different directions. One way was kind of a slow, meandering way around the hill. And the other one was a path that went straight up, super steep, straight up to the very top. So Jen looks at both of our boys and says, hey boys, which way do you want to go? And both of them immediately say, straight up, mom. So up we went. Jen in front with Peyton, he's older, and I followed behind with Cole, and we were helping them over some of the logs and the rocks and stuff. And Jen and Peyton got a little ways away ahead of us. And then Jen told me later that when she and Peyton got to the top of the pitch, Peyton realized that the other staff had had gone ahead and and her and him and Jen were, were alone. So he began to get a bit of a quiver in his voice and he turned to his mom and said, Mommy, there's like, there's no one here. We're all alone. And, and Jen looked at Peyton and said, Son, it's okay. We're fine. The staff are just around the corner and we're going to catch up real soon. And then Peyton became more and more agitated and suddenly he began to melt down and started to say, Mom, we can't do this. We're alone, Mom. I can't go on. And then suddenly Jen, they're beautiful red hair that speaks of like fire in her soul. She snaps around and turns to Peyton and says, Peyton, when things get hard, we do not quit. We get up and we keep going. Now go. Thankfully, Peyton turned to his mom and said, okay, and turned and kept going. You know, I was thinking to myself when I told, when she told me the story, I was like, man, that's a good choice, son. You know, one of the things that this past year has taught us is that there are plenty of seasons when life isn't easy. Isn't that true? When it's hard to keep going, when we're faced with obstacles that force us to consider quitting, where where we need to make tough decisions just to keep one foot in front of the other. And, And the truth is, that's exactly the same as when it comes to following Jesus. You know, last week, Bex talked about choosing to follow Jesus, and that one way to do that might be by getting baptized, to make a public statement that you are a follower of Christ. And some of you have chosen or are thinking about choosing to do that. Good for you. For many of you, this is something like pretty exciting. But choosing to follow Jesus is not just about doing things that are exciting. I mean, facts are, there are times when following Jesus is exciting and fun. That's true. But there are also times when it's hard, really hard. And like Peyton, we are faced with the choices of persevering or giving up. Hey, take some time in your groups and let's talk about that. Okay, Hebrews 12, 1 to 2 is a part of the Bible that talks about choosing to follow Jesus, even when it's hard. Listen to what the Bible says about persevering. Here's what it says. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. The main line in these two verses is a line that says, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Two things stand out to me from that line. First, the Bible says that when it comes to following Jesus, we need to run. He doesn't say meander. He doesn't say wander, not crawl. He says run. And I think what the Bible is saying is that there should be a passion in us when it comes to following Jesus. We should be excited about it. We should be energized to do what Christ is calling us to do. But the second thing the Bible says is that when it comes to running, we need to do it with endurance. Now, why would the Bible say endurance? When do we need to endure? 
so a number of years ago, I entered into a race called the Trans Rockies Bike Race. It was a multi-day mountain bike race that was like, seriously, super long. The first day we raced for 40 clicks, which didn't seem that bad, but the second day we went 140 clicks, and the third day was 130 kilometers. That's a lot of kilometers to be sitting on a mountain bike. I remember one of the worst parts for me was when the shocks on my bike collapsed, and I had to ride over two mountain passes without suspension. My whole body hurt, and my mind told me that I needed to shut it down. But my partner told me to keep going. He didn't say it was going to be easy. He simply told me to keep going. He helped me choose to endure. Hey, let's talk about that a little bit. Has there ever been a time in your life when you've had to endure? You know, when my friend and I entered the bike race, we knew it wasn't going to be easy. We knew there would be plenty of moments when we would need to endure. The author of Hebrews wouldn't tell us to run with endurance if following Jesus would always be easy. Of course, it isn't always easy. But not only does he tell us it's not easy, in these verses, he actually gives us ways to endure. And there's three of them. The first way we can run with endurance is by listening to the stories of those who have endured before us. Listen to what it says. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Okay, did you hear that? He says, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, we should run with endurance. So a witness can do two things. They can either see something, as in, I witnessed John Mark dancing by himself with headphones on the other day. That's kind of awkward. <laughs> Or they can tell us something, like I'm witnessing to you or telling you that John Mark was seriously dancing awkwardly with headphones on the other day. In this passage, the author is saying we should listen to witnesses tell us stories about how they persevered, how they ran with endurance, and how it is worth it for us to keep going. We all need witnesses in our lives. We need people who have gone before us to tell us it is worth it, to tell us we are okay and we will be okay. Have you ever asked an older person who loves Jesus to tell you their story of what it was like for them to follow Jesus? How Jesus helped them through hard times? How enduring was worth it? You know, just hearing the stories of God's faithfulness can totally change our perspective on things and give us the courage and energy we need to keep going. We need to listen to people witnessing. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing the author says is we need to do is we need to prepare ourselves. So listen to what he says. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and seated at the right hand on the throne of God. You know, one way bikers prepare themselves to race is by removing anything that slows them down. It's why they wear awkward looking spandex, like really awkward looking spandex. So their normal cl clothes won't slow them down. So the Bible tells us that nothing slows us down, makes us want to quit like sin. When we purposefully choose to not live as Jesus has designed us to live, when we love anything more than we love Jesus and others, it becomes very hard to endure. In fact, I'd say impossible. One way we can prepare to run the way Jesus wants us to run is to consistently ask God to show us if there is any sin in our lives or anything that's distracting us from, from his way. And because he loves us, he will reveal to us if there's anything we need to remove by asking his forgiveness and strength to live different. We can't endure if we don't confess and repent of sin. So first, we need to listen. Second, we need to prepare. And finally, we have to focus. So Hebrews goes on to say, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. So when it comes to biking, racers know that where you look, you go. If you want to get through a sharp turn, look to where you want to end up. As followers of Christ, we are told that what we behold, 
we become. Whatever we spend time looking at, thinking about, meditating on, will shape what we end up like. That's why the Bible says if we want to endure like Jesus, we need to focus on Jesus. And as we focus on Jesus, how he lived, how he suffered, how he loved others, and how he ultimately died and rose again, man, I love Easter. He says he perfects our faith. As we do that, he perfects our faith. His ability to endure becomes our ability to endure. And as we behold Jesus, we become like Jesus. Hebrews tells us that if we are going to endure as Christians, there are three things we have to do. Did you catch it? We need to listen, prepare, and focus. We need to listen to people of faith who have gone before us. We need to confess sin that keeps us from following Jesus. And we need to spend time focusing on the life of Jesus so that we can become like Jesus. And we need to do this consistently. It's not just a one-time decision like baptism. This is a way of life. You know, over the last number of months, I've been working on being healthier. And one way I've been doing it is, is by running, most days. I'll be honest with you, for me, running takes serious endurance. It's not easy. Funny, there have been three things that have helped me endure when it comes to running. Uh, number one, I've joined an online club where I can listen to other runners talk about the benefits of running. That's helped. Two, I get prepared. I'm ditching things that make running difficult and doing the good things like drinking water that helps me feel better. And then finally, I focus. I focus on the benefits of running and what my future might look like if I keep going. These three things have helped me endure. You know, it's, it's not unlike following Jesus. If we want to endure, we need to listen, prepare, and focus. And if we do, when the going gets hard, and it will, we can get up and we can keep going. Hey, for your last time in your small groups, I want you to look at three things that you could do over this next week that would help you listen, prepare, and focus. Essentially, it would help you to endure. God bless you guys.